Chapter 14, Bread Pudding. The next day, Abuela and Mamie were in the kitchen arguing again. Abuela was saying, I don't know how you can think I could have had anything to do with that robbery. I know that you will do anything for your causes. Maybe you wanted money for those crazy young lords. They clean up the streets, said Abuela, flabbergasted. She stopped for a second, then added, ignoring them will not make them go away. Just like tearing out the picture of the Ponce massacre will not make it like it never happened. I walked in. They fell silent. Go to your room, said my mother. What room? I said. I don't have a room. Don't worry, mija. You will now, said Abuela. What? I turned to my mother. What is she talking about? I'm moving out, said Abuela. I looked to my mother. Mamie, she didn't say anything then. Maybe it's the best thing. Abuela turned on her heel and went into her room. Mamie, you're going to let her go? Mamie ignored me. I could hear Abuela rummaging. She came back into the kitchen with a small packed bag. I will come back for the rest of my things later. She slammed her way out the door. Mamie, but Mamie had her head in the oven as if she thought she could hide there, but I knew she was getting ready to bake. She turned it on and lit it. As I watched the roaches make their getaways, Mamie went to the refrigerator and took out some butter. Mamie, why are you and Abuela fighting all the time? Mamie didn't answer. Instead, she kept poking around the cupboard, bringing out loaves of old bread and crumbling it into a bowl. Do you really think Abuela had something to do with the break-in? Esa es sabre Dios. She loves violence. She loves revolution. Eh, peque? For what? Mommy took some milk out of the refrigerator and started pouring it over the bread. A sickening wave of anger swept over me. She was on automatic all the time. A bomb could go off next to her and she'd react by making bread pudding. Mamie, stop! But she didn't stop. She began mashing up the bread with her hands, letting it squeeze through her fingers like she was a robot. Seeing her thick, callous hands working with the bread made me nauseous and angry. I studied her wide back funneling down her legs all the way to her big, flat feet. So ugly. Mamie, I shouted. Don't you dare yell at me. She slapped me. I almost laughed as bits of bread flew through the air before creating a cushion between her doughy wet hand and my cheek. At least I got a reaction out of her. I couldn't look at my fat mother. I decided right then that I wasn't going to be like my mother, the slave. Mamie raised her hands before breaking some eggs over a bowl, then hesitated, holding the shells for a moment as if she didn't know what to do with them. Suddenly remember where the trash was, she dumped them reached for a spoon, stirred up the goop, slathered the pan with butter, poured the whole mess into the baking pan, and finally put it all in the oven. She sat down with an empty look in her eye. She sighed. Yes, said Akabe, she said. It's finished. What was finished? The baking? Our relationship? The Lord? The young lords? I looked at the grease stains on the walls and at my mother's pathetic attempts to make everything pretty with plastic and roses. I stormed out the door to find Abuela, but she was nowhere. It was as if El Barrio had swallowed her up.